Salut, c'est Géraldine. I'm back for the second part of the lesson of the modern use of on in French. If you're A1 or A2, I highly recommend you check part one, even if you're advanced or intermediate. But if you're a beginner, don't worry too much about what's coming next in this lesson. You can check it out, enjoy it, but don't worry too much if you don't understand everything. Learn the conjugations of the important French verbs in present instead. Um, I've said that before, but you can download the lesson on comminfrances.com because you will get the conjugations, the rules, everything we're talking about this lesson. If you want to download it to take notes, highlight stuff, take it with you so you can remember what we're going through together better. Let's start. First, we're going to talk about l'accord du participe passé et des adjectifs avec on. L'accord du participe passé et des adjectifs avec on. We saw before that on replaces nous in everyday spoken French. On remplace nous en français parlé. On remplace nous en français parlé. That's what we covered in part one. We saw that nous mangeons une glace becomes on mange une glace. Nous mangeons une glace becomes on mange une glace. But if we replace nous by on, it means that on represents several people. On remplace plusieurs personnes. So what happened with le participe passé an adjective? Let's look at that together. First, for un participe passé. Let's look at a phrase. For example, nous sommes allés au cinéma. Nous sommes allés au cinéma. And here we assume that it's two women talking. Deux femmes. Nous sommes allés au cinéma for deux femmes. If we replace it by on, we write it this way. On est allé au cinéma. On est allé au cinéma. As you can see here, le participe passé agrees with the pronoun. And here, because on is about several people, it agrees with several people, just like for nous. So it's exactly the same. Nous sommes allés au cinéma. On est allé au cinéma. Aller is exactly the same. Okay? And for the adjectives, it's exactly the same. Nous sommes contentes de te revoir. Nous sommes contentes de te revoir. For two women, we're happy to see you again. Nous sommes contentes de te revoir. Content here takes E and S because it's two women talking. When we replace it with on, it becomes on est contente de te revoir. On est contente de te revoir. It's two women again, so we have ES at the end of contente. So you see, for the participe passé and the adjective, you just do as if you had new at the beginning because on covers two people. If you're advanced, this doesn't uh, happen if on is indefini, okay? Or if it's about um, talking about someone else than two people, which we saw at, the, at part one. You remember about the tone and the context of the phrase? So this doesn't apply in this way. But if you're intermediate, just forget about what I just said. Just remember, le participe passé and the adjective agrees with the subject. And here, on is about several people. This is a very common mistake um, that uh, even French people make. It's kind of the rule, even though lots of people disagree with the way that we use it, because they disagree with the fact that we're using on to replace new. But honestly, 99% of people do it. So there are rules now about that. So just learn them and embrace them if you want to speak everyday French. If you're doing a PhD in French, maybe don't, but that's a completely different topic. Now, if you know French a little bit, your second question after how does the participe passé agree is, how does le déterminant possessif agree with on? Don't worry if you don't know the grammar terms. I wanted to give them to you so you can Google them if you need to. But we're going to see examples together. So, le déterminant possessif avec on. So we saw, that's good, that on replaces nous. Nous mangeons une glace becomes on mange une glace. But what about nous mangeons notre glace? Nous mangeons notre glace. We're eating our ice cream. What do you do then? 
Well, that's very easy. Should we say on mange sa glace? Non. That's for on as un pronom indéfini. Again, if you're advanced, remember that. If you're not, forget about it. On mange sa glace would only be for indefinite pronoun of the use of on. So forget about that. Here we're talking about on replaces nous. Well, it's exactly like le participe passé and the adjectives that we saw just in the previous part. Exactly the same. We say nous mangeons notre glace becomes on mange notre glace. On mange notre glace. My pro tip is here. Keep on equal nous in your head all the time. This way, everything else is good. You just, you just conjugate on plus the verb and the rest of the phrase is just like with nous. Okay? Remember, nous mangeons notre glace becomes on mange notre glace. Okay, now, that's maybe a lot for you. So if you're B1 or B2, which is intermediate, don't worry too much about what's next in the lesson. Okay? Build the right sentences with on. Make the participe passé and the... Um, adjectives agree, make, put not where it has to go, but don't worry too much about what's coming next. You can be curious, I highly recommend that, but don't try to implement it too fast because your French will just be awkward. Again, I've said that before, I'm going to say it again because too few students know about that. You can download the full PDF of the lesson with the expressions, the verbs, the rules that we talked about it. So you can print it, take it with you, highlight, take notes, share it with your friend on the blog. It's completely free, just leave your first name and email and you will get the downloadable lesson, the beautiful PDF right away. So don't miss that. Now let's look at more advanced topic on the everyday modern use of on. So, the first topic I want to see with you is la dislocation. It's something that you probably heard in TV shows, movies. It's not new. It's not new. It's old. But we we'll use it more and more and more, and uh, it's getting more and more popular. So, la dislocation, again, that's a grammar nerd uh, word for it. But you can get, Google it if you want. But if you don't, let's look at the examples together. It's something that we use in spoken French, less in written French as a subject. That's for grammar nerds out there. Some people say it's childish French. I don't think it is, because if you know how to use it, it's not childish. It's a way to insist on a topic. But lots of children use it because they don't really know how to make a proper sentence in French. So, what am I talking about? Let's look at this example. Moi, j'aime la glace à la fraise. Moi, j'aime la glace à la fraise. It means me, I like strawberry ice cream. We use the repetition of the subject in order to insist on the fact that I really like it. But what about on? What do we say? Mm -mm, on aime la glace à la fraise, if you want, or ice cream in general. What do we put at the beginning? Because for je, it's moi. That's pretty easy. But what about on? Let's look at several examples together and I'm going to go deeper on la dislocation for you so you can really understand what I'm talking about. Here, we're only talking about the subject. You can use it in different ways. This is not the topic of the lesson. But we're going to only look at the subject because on is a subject. So, moi, j'aime la glace à la fraise. Toi, tu aimes la glace à la fraise. If you're a grammar nerd, the first part, moi, toi, etc., is le pronom tonique. Le pronom tonique. Je, tu, il, etc., is le pronom personnel. That's easy. You already know that. Then we have the verb, le verbe, and then le complément, la glace à la fraise. So, moi, j'aime. Toi, tu aimes. Lui, il aime. Elle, elle aime. Then, we don't know, on aime. Nous, nous aimons, vous, vous aimez, eux, ils aiment, et elles, elles aiment. I wanted to show you the full table so you can embrace it and see how it agrees with different uh, persons. 
What do we put with on? Well, I said before that you should always keep in mind that on equals nous in spoken French. So you could just put nous. Nous, on aime la glace à la fraise. And this is very French. Nous, on aime la glace à la fraise. It's a very interesting structure. You can use it, you can not use it. If you want to insist on the fact that you really like ice cream and the others maybe don't, that's a good way to have this sentence that's very authentic, very spoken French, very modern. If you're a grammar nerd, uh, here's a very interesting resource for you. And if you're a very advanced grammar nerd, like you love super complicated details, there's a second uh, uh, link I'm putting for you. You will find the resource on the blog on Commune Francaise. But again, don't freak out when you're looking at that. It's really for grammar nerds. I am one of them, so I really like to go into things, but you don't have to know that. That's for linguists and teachers. Okay, so now that we saw that together, let's take a little quiz. Again, take your time, don't worry. There's, it's okay to make mistakes. Um, so, utilise on à la place de nous. So I put three levels, depending on the three parts of the lesson that we saw before. Um, so we have, nous sommes allés au cinéma. Nous sommes allés au cinéma. Where nous is Caroline et moi. So I am a woman and Caroline is a woman as well. Nous sommes allés au cinéma. How would you translate the phrase with on? With on. The second uh, phrase is, nous prenons notre voiture pour partir en vacances. Nous prenons notre voiture pour partir en vacances. On, then. And at the end, Caroline et moi, nous sommes contentes de notre séjour en Corse. Caroline et moi, nous sommes contentes de notre séjour en Corse. So, how would you use this phrase and replace nous with on? I'm not saying anything. Okay? Just look at what we saw before. I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about that. I highly recommend you write them down with your hands and a pencil so you can really get it into your hand, head. Good. So these were pretty easy examples if you learned what we saw before. So the first answer is on est allé au cinéma. On est allé au cinéma. Here what's, what matters is to make the verb agree with on. So we have on est, and then it's un passé composé. So aller, le participe passé, has to agree with the subject. The subject is two women. It's Caroline and me. Caroline and I went to the cinema. So yeah. Uh, so here it's Caroline et moi. So it's two women. You need to make it agree with it. So it has to be feminine and plural. Féminin pluriel. On est allé au cinéma. Second example. Uh, on prend notre voiture pour partir en vacances. On prend notre voiture pour partir en vacances. So again, remember what I told you before. On prend. So prendre agree with on. On prend. And notre agree with, with nous that we saw before. On prend notre voiture pour partir en vacances. If you're advanced, you can see that here, if we're saying on prend sa voiture pour partir en vacances, it would be on as a pronoun indéfini. So it means someone, anyone, or a pronoun that you replaced, that you, you replaced with on. So again, the context and the meaning will make you understand it. But in everyday spoken French, when we replace nous with on, it will be on prend notre voiture pour partir en vacances. And the last one, Caroline et moi, on est contente de notre séjour en Corse. Caroline et moi, on est contente de notre, vo de notre séjour en France. On est, the verb être agrees with on, and the adjective agrees with nous. On est contente, so it's two women, so you have to put feminine and plural, contente, es. If you're advanced and you want to improve your written French, always check your participe passé, participe passé and your adjectives. I see more and more students not checking them enough. So check them out. This can make a huge difference. And it's very easy to fix. So check the subject, check the participe passé and the adjectives. If they agree, you're good. If they don't, correct them. 
Now let's look very quickly at advanced French with on. I wanted to give you two examples of uh, words that include on. If you're advanced, it's interesting to know. Uh, we have le candiraton, le candiraton, which literally means what are we going to say about it, as in what are they going to say about it, means l'opinion des autres. So it's gossip most of the time. Le candiraton, le candiraton is l'opinion des autres. Gossip, what are people going to say about that? The second one is les ondis. Les ondis, again, is the we say, literally, and it's les rumeurs. Les rumeurs, again, it's gossip. So it's two examples of advanced French that you can read in the newspaper, that you can use. But again, don't freak out if you don't understand them or don't remember them. It's just like funny things to add to your French. And at last, if you're advanced in grammar, on is very, very often uh, linked to le phonie. Le phonie is how to make sounds fit together and is very French, I think. I feel, is for example, when we add L majuscule to on, okay? For example, in uh, le pays où l'on habite. Le pays où l'on habite, we should say le pays où on habite, but we say le pays où l'on habite, because it sounds better. And very often students ask me, why did you put that? I don't know, because it sounds better. So check le phonie if you're advanced French. You can see other ways to build le phonie, one that you can see yet that we just saw before, uh, but on plus L apostrophe is very, very common. So check it out if you're into grammar. If you're not, that's fine. Et toi, what were you struggling with about on that is okay now? Okay, what were you struggling with about on before that is now clear? Because sometimes we struggle with something and ta -da, you just need an explanation and you're good. It's something that just happened to me last week about accents in English. I didn't know the rule. There was any rule. And I just bought a, bought a book and there was a rule there and now I understand. So maybe in the upcoming weeks, my English will improve, hopefully. So in French, this about spoken, uh, this element of spoken French, that is on, can make a huge difference in your French. So you just needed an explanation and here you are. So tell me in French, if you can, I know that very often students struggle to answer in French in the comments. So here's an example. Avant, j'avais du mal avec, avant j'avais du mal avec, aujourd'hui j'ai compris que, ok? Aujourd'hui j'ai compris que, before I struggled with and today I understood that. That's just an example, you don't have to use this structure, it's just a little start if you want to answer in the comments in French. If you like this lesson, if you learn something, if you have a francophile friend who would love to know about the use of on e everyday spoken French, please share this lesson with them. It's free, they learn something, they have fun, they thank you later, and you can speak French together. So please share it on Facebook, by email, by just telling them, texting them the link, whatever you like. Please help your friend. Now, if you learned something and you don't want to wait until next week to learn something else and you want to learn more about spoken French, I highly recommend you get my 10-day everyday French crash course. It's a 10-day mini course to double your Frenchness in just 10 days. It's by email. It's completely free. You just have to leave me your first name and email on cominfrances.com and you will receive lesson one straight away. I hope you like this lesson and you learned something. I look forward to hearing about you in the comments and I wish you une bonne journée. Allez, salut!